My name's Kim Hammond. I'm one of the clinical skills facilitators and I'm here today to teach you how to perform basic life support on a child. How we will do that is initially I will run through at normal speed what I would do if I walked into this room and found a child I wasn't happy with. Then what I will do once that's complete is I will then go through it again explaining what I've done and why I've done it, this time breaking everything down into its smallest component. Hello little boy, can you hear me? Wake up. Can I have some help in here please? Five, Hi, six, Kim, how seven, can I help you? Eight, nine, ten. Can you go and dial double two, double two? Tell them we've got a paediatric cardiac arrest. Tell them exactly where we are, and on your way back, bring all the paediatric resuscitation equipment. Okay, I'll do an arrest call and come back in a minute. And what we would do is we would do that for four cycles of 15 to 2 or approximately a minute. At the end of that, if my help wasn't here, I would leave this child safely, make my phone call, come back and start resuscitating again. Okay, what we're now going to do is go through that all over again, but this time we're going to explain what we've done and why we've done it. So what that means is breaking everything down into its smallest component. The first thing I'm going to do is to check my surrounding area to make sure I'm safe to approach this child in the first place. If he's connected to an electricity supply, for example, isolate where the power's coming from and switch it off. If there are relatives around, move them out of the way, allow somebody to stay with them hopefully explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it, but I do need room to work. Once I've made sure I'm safe to approach, I would then try and get some response from the child. Hello little boy, can you hear me? Use painful stimulus as well as talking to him. If there's no response from the child at this point, I would shout for help. Can I have some help please? And to pull my emergency buzzer. What I'm then going to do while I wait for some help to arrive is I'm going to check this child's airway. I'm going to look inside his mouth to see if there's anything in there. If I can see something in his mouth that I can remove with a pincer grip, I will take it out. If I can't see it or remove it, I'm not going to put my fingers in at all. No blind finger sweep. I'll then open his airway, a slight head tilt chin lift. I will then look, listen and feel for signs of normal breathing for somebody of this age group. Looking to see if the chest is rising and falling, listening and feeling for breath on my cheek. Do that for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If my help is here at this point, I will ask them to go and phone for the emergency. Jonathan, can you dial double two double two? Tell them we have a paediatric cardiac arrest tell them exactly where we are and on your way back bring all the paediatric resuscitation equipment you can find. I'll put out a call and bring you some equipment. Thank you. While Jonathan's doing that, I will now deliver five rescue breaths of which I want at least two to be effective. And by effective, I mean you can see the chest rise and fall. I'm going to pinch the soft part of the child's nose. I'm going to put my mouth around the hole of their mouth and I'm going to blow in just enough to make the chest rise and fall. Once I've delivered those rescue breaths, I'm going to check for signs of circulation. If I'm happy, I will check for a pulse, but looking for things like, is he moving? Is he blinking? Is he breathing? Is he swallowing? And I do that for a game for 10 seconds. For me not to do chest compressions, I need to feel a heartbeat of at least 60 beats per minute. If I can't feel a pulse of at least 60 beats per minute, 
I'm going to start chest compressions. To do that, I'm going to put the heel of my hand on the lower half of the sternum, making sure my fingers are away from the rib cage. I'm going to straighten my arm, lean my body vertical above this person's chest. I'm going to give 15 chest compressions, the depth of a third of however deep this child is, and I'm aiming for 120 beats per minute. That's two beats per second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Come back, do two more breaths. Another fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Once equipment comes back, we're then going to stop mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and start using equipment. So if we can have two breaths, Jonathan. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And we would continue that for four cycles or approximately a minute. At the end of that minute, if I didn't have any help here in the first place, I would run off make my phone call, come back and start again.